always have your nine to five because that's your security. That's what you're going to be using to invest into your business. But people struggle to find time. So you're either going to have to make time before or you're going to have to make time after your job. And you have to come to an agreement that you have to be strict with your time management. In today's interview, I'm going to be talking with one of the biggest names in the e-commerce game. And I guarantee that the golden nuggets that you are going to learn here, you will not be able to find anywhere else. I'm talking about none other than Ecom King. Whether you've heard about him before or not, He's one of the top Shopify dropshippers out there today. He's got a really successful YouTube channel. He's got so much more going on for him. And if you always wanted to start your own Shopify dropshipping business or dropshipping business, e-commerce business in particular, and you're not really sure where to start, how to get started, and how to really wrap your head around the whole concept, this podcast episode is for you. Ecom King, thank you for joining us today. Please introduce yourself and let us know how you got started in the field of dropshipping on Shopify in the first place. I just wanted to start off by saying thank you so much, AutoDS, for having me on today. And I hope your audience can learn a lot from my experience with Shopify dropshipping. So my journey started all the way back in 2017. So I had a buying and reselling business doing luxury goods prior to this. And I wanted to find a way to scale this online business. So I did some research online, Googled it, and I found a few blog forums saying that dropshipping was a great opportunity to have an online scalable business with a low upfront cost. So that's when I dived into dropshipping. And then around about two years into my journey, that's when I started seeing some serious success. M hit my first seven figures in revenue with around about a 15, 20% profit margin. And then that's pretty much history from then. You've seen my journey all documented on this YouTube channel, The Ecom King. Right. And we're going to try to dive much deeper into that whole process and everything that happened during those uh, first couple of years until you really started hitting it off. And, mm -hmm. uh, and of, uh, of course, since I skipped it in the first few seconds of the video, welcome. We're really, really happy to have you here. And let's go ahead and dive into it. So what actually what made you decide to pursue this business ch uh, model in the first place? I mean, there's so many things that you could have done and still can do to make money online, right? And it's something that a lot of people are interested in. There's so many ways to do it. Uh, some are better than the others. What made you pursue this business model? And what made you choose Shopify as your selling channel out of all of the options that you have out there? Yeah, so the reason why I started dropshipping as the business model was because when I looked on that blog forum of other things like affiliate marketing, Amazon FBA, this one sounded more lucrative to me. Um, and in the long term, it sounded like it would pay off more. Some of the other ones sounded better in the short term, but long term, they were restrictive. So I thought more long term about it. And because of my prior business being more restrictive, that was something that I was really keen on making sure I didn't fall into again. And, there, and to be honest with you, I don't know if many people know this, but I didn't actually start with Shopify to start with. I actually tried doing drop shipping on Wix, but that was an absolute mess. So I moved to Shopify because of the integrations. They make life so easy as a beginner, even as an advanced e-commerce expert, the integrations, what they offer, the support is just unmatched in the industry. Okay. Yeah. So some good pointers there. Shopify is uh, more, uh, a little bit more open, a little bit less strict. We don't have the whole selling limits thing going on. We can like list even a thousand products on day one if we wanted to. And uh, just makes it like much more different than any other selling channel that we know of today, especially marketplaces. So that's a really good point there. Let's talk a little bit about suppliers before we start diving into it, it in, into it some more. Usually when, when we want to start a dropshipping business, we start by looking at what products we can sell and suppliers. It usually starts from there. So when we talk about suppliers, what criteria do you usually consider when selecting what suppliers you want to work with? Yeah, so really the truth is, and I say this to everyone, is unless you're working with a private supplier and buying in minimum order quantities, most of the suppliers are roughly the same because they're getting the products from the same place. But a few things that I look into is, who is their customer support representatives? Can they speak good, fluid English? Is there any language barriers? The other things is how honest and transparent are they being? Are they not making things up on the spot? So you have to ask them questions. And with those answers, you can work out if they're being honest with you or not. But really, I want to know if the product is in their warehouse ready to ship. Because if they have to then go and get it from a different warehouse, that's what makes the process in time between one and 10 days. And you're not going to get it to your customer very quickly. And then you're going to have issues and then the other problem that I sometimes see is, are the images, is everything really coming from that supplier or are they just ripping it off other suppliers? So it's just about working with a supplier where they've got the product in their warehouse, they're honest, they've got, they've got good customer support with good language um, 
facilities in terms of people in their company being able to speak different types of languages. And then the other thing on top of that is, is there, have they got any type of insurance? Do they have any form of liability if things arrive to the customer broken or damaged and their process? Okay, so it's really understanding the supplier's logistics. If they're just another middleman standing between you and the actual supplier who can work with you, then you'd rather skip that one out and 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 get straight to the to the supplier that can work with you uh, directly with you know cutting out all the middlemen. Uh, and also, as you mentioned, the language. You, we don't want that language barrier. We want those that actually speak really uh, English really well. And it's not just for our communication with them, right? It's also so that we can pass on better policies to our buyers. So whatever we're getting from our suppliers, we can move on to our buyers, which makes us uh, be able to give better customer service. So the better we're getting, the better we're able to pass on to our uh, buyers. You made some really good points there. How do you find these suppliers in the first place? You know your criteria, but how can you actually find them? Yeah, so there's some household names that are that are worthy of working with. You know, you've got CJ Dropship and you've got Zen Drop. You know, you've got uh, Hyper SKU, you've got Wio, you've got the household names that people use. And then if you want to find a few more private suppliers, then you can Google. So if you want to find like a private dropship supplier for, let's say, furniture, you could go onto Google and type in furniture dropshipping suppliers, and it's going to come up with a massive either blog forum telling you the ones they recommend, or they'll be listed on there. You just want to go on their website and see if there's a dropshipping section or a fulfillment section and see if they have a, any mentioning of dropshipping on there. Sometimes you have to pay like a license fee. Uh, sometimes you just have to register. So those are some things that I personally do. Okay, so you can go with the big name suppliers uh, like those ones that you mentioned, and you can dive into it a little bit deeper, narrow down the, 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 the suppliers that you can actually work with that maybe not everybody else is working with, and that's actually making those Google searches on the niche that you're trying to sell. And that's going to find you, and uh, well, of course, with the word suppliers, and that's going to find you all kinds of supplier websites where you can actually just reach out to them and start negotiating from there. Okay, some good points there about suppliers, what criteria to look out for, how to find them, whether the big names, or if we want to start looking for the ones that maybe not so many other dropshippers are, are working with them, which means that we will inevitably get access to better products, better pricing, hopefully, but it all depends on our experience and our negotiation skills. Let's talk a little bit about product research. So we know a little bit about suppliers. Now let's jump into the product. So when you're starting a new store, what are the key factors that you're considering during the product research phase? Yes, yeah, something that I like to do more recently is make sure that there's some form of momentum uh, going into that niche. So I won't just go into a niche if there isn't any natural momentum there. And how you find that natural momentum is are we coming up to a certain event? Are we coming up to a certain holiday period? Is it the summer? Is it the winter? So I like to do more seasonal things now as a drop shipper because you get natural momentum, which makes it easier to get sales, to see success. So you might want to go, there's a website. If you just type in upcoming holidays, there'll be a website that will list all the upcoming major holidays. You can even go to your Apple calendar, your Google calendar, they'll be written in there. And then also kind of use your brain and think to yourself, are we in the winter? Are we coming into the summer? So think about that and always have a two month lead towards that. You don't want to be just getting straight into it on the day. So let's say for example, we want to take advantage of Mother's Day. We don't want to do drop shipping on the week of Mother's Day. You want to be leading up to it prior three months. And then that's my personal opinion. You're going to get that good natural momentum. Okay, so getting ready for the seasons up in advance, getting your store ready two, three months uh, in advance with the right products. But how do we actually find those products besides just knowing, okay, now winter's coming up, summer's coming up. How do we like di di dive deep into, in, inside the products and understand which products are actually going to sell well for us and which ones we're probably just going to be wasting our time trying to sell? Yeah, there's a few things that you can do. So I'm going to mention a few free methods that I like to do and then mention a paid method. So the free method that I like to do is by going onto Google and typing in best selling products Mother's Day. And then Amazon gives you a list of their best selling products on Mother's Day. There's going to be other websites. You can go to a website called eBay Watch Counter and you can change it by country and you can see which are the highest viewed listings on eBay. And most of the listings are drop shipping products. So then you can then look on AliExpress as a directory to see if the product exists as a drop shipping product, then go to your supplier or you can go onto TikTok and search for Mother's Day finds or Amazon finds and they're going to give you a massive list as well of Amazon great sellers for those events as well. You can then also go onto Google Shopping and just type in Mother's Day gift. You're going to see those are Google Shopping ads. Most of them are drop shipping ads. So then you can look for into those products. 
Okay, really interesting. So there's more than one place, of course, that we can go to. It can be social media platforms. It can be uh, 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 websites. It could be searching our suppliers' websites, their bestseller sections, or or searching for whatever holiday is coming up and seeing their bestsellers, whether on Amazon or other places. So there's more than enough places for us to find products. And then we will actually reach out to the suppliers that we talked about in the previous uh, uh, questions uh, in our previous conversation and actually work w- w- and try to work with those suppliers, see what products they have uh, with the ones that we actually found during our product research phase. So with the places where we find the products that, 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 that will give us the ideas of what we can sell are not specifically the suppliers that we're actually going to get them from. We're going to get those product ideas and move them on over to our suppliers. So you have some really good tips there regarding uh, product research. Uh, some of them are actually new to me. So uh, I was really happy to hear it, like that eBay watch counter and, uh, and yeah, other ideas that you had. I'm sure that the listeners or the viewers uh, in this podcast episode are also going to get some value from it. So how do you identify, let's say, okay, so you found the products, you were able to see some Mother's Day products, like let's say you found 100 Mother's Day products on Amazon, how are you going to narrow that down and actually find the ones that are worth selling, the ones that actually have a better chance of selling rather than the other 99 flowers for mother, or as an example? Yeah, so what you can do is you can go onto Google Trends and search and see, because you can filter Google Trends by shopping interests, so that's more than niche down to that kind of um that kind of emotion. So if you look for the ones that have got the most Google Trends shopping search, that's a great indicator. Then what you can also do is, now this is a paid option, but it's really worth the investment. It's not expensive. You can use a tool like Peekster. Peekster has a feature in there where you can actually search for a product name or you can add a Shopify store as long as they're on Shopify, which 90% are, and it will tell you how much money they're making with those products that they've got listed. And then you can work out which one's making the most money for them. And it literally shows you the active sales every day on there. Okay. So this is how you're actually going to narrow it down. So you, you started off a little bit broad. Let's say summer's coming up. I'm going to look up some summer products, uh, see what some summer products are best selling on Amazon and in other places, get some product ideas. Then I'm going to take those product ideas and I can put them in uh, in a tool like Peekstar to be able to identify and and narrow down the products and see actually which ones are the best sellers inside those specific niches that we found during our our more broad search. So that's actually going to help us narrow down some more, and it's going to give us uh, all of the uh, winning product analytics on what makes this product uh, special, and of course, if it's worth selling, uh, the benefits and uh, the statistics. So, um, okay, so that's also a really, really good method. Uh, do you have any other strategies that you're doing to uh, to to differentiate your Shopify stores from competitors? Since at the end of the day, whether we're using free tools or paid tools, and I'm sure that paid tools like the one you mentioned, Pixta, is going to help us get. Uh, it's just going to help us save time, and and it's going to uh, it, it's it's not as time consuming as trying to find all the statistics by yourself, which can also work, but it will take more time, and you will. Uh, but just find less products in more time this way. So what strategies do you employ to differentiate your Shopify stores from your competitors when you're most likely selling maybe not the same exact products, but similar products from the same niches? Well, even if you were to sell the same products in the same niche is literally the same one. It comes down to two very simple things. What is the offer? What is the angle? And what is the branding? Now, the easiest one to do is make your brand look a little bit more professional, really invest into the color scheme, the logo, the way your website comes across. But that isn't the most powerful way, but that's one of the good ways. The next thing is, what offer are you putting into the marketplace to get somebody to buy your product? Now, most dropshippers are trying the same offer. Buy my product at a 20% discount, um, that's it. Try and offer them a free ebook, offer them a free product on top of the one they're buying. It might only cost you 50 cents or $1 to get it, but then that might be the differentiator of them coming to you. Because imagine you buying a pair of shoes. Would you rather buy a pair of shoes from somebody that's just giving you the shoes or somebody that's giving you the shoes and maybe some shoe spray to keep them nice and clean for the next one year? You're going to go with the person that gives you the extra spray for free. So that's one good way. And then what angle in which emotions are you trying to target? Most people go with the most common ones, which is, you know, feel of lost in terms of they feel like they're missing out. Then they're going for some of the emotions, maybe some of the ones that are saying, well, if you don't do this, then you might regret it. 
So think of other ways you can try and make an offer or an angle to get somebody to come to your website and buy what it is that you're trying to sell. Okay, I really like that. I really like that. So there's a few uh, methods that you can really differentiate yourself from the competition. Like uh, like you said, you can offer something that other dropshippers are simply not offering. And it's not just that price slasher, 10% lower or 20% lower than the original price, which we inflated anyway and to begin with to get to the price that we want to get to anyway. It's actually making a better offer sending uh but perhaps sending some kind of an item a gift that goes along with that that could only set us back 50 cents a dollar even two dollars i mean we're we're talking about big profits here uh in drop shipping anyway we're not working with like 10 percent profit margins uh and so th this means that of course we have more room to add more things and that could also help us differentiate and make even more sales this way and also trying to talk to the customer uh, uh, emotionally trying to t tap into their emotions and better marketing angles. Okay, I really like all of that. Let's talk about something that's been really trending recently. And there are ways to also uh, use its benefits in our dropshipping businesses too. And I'm talking about artificial intelligence. So it's the new kid on the block. It's been around for less than a year now, you know, w w with the mass adoption uh, globally. People have been doing some pretty amazing things with uh, with AI, not just creating uh, e-commerce stores and, and helping you with uh, with some things that you can uh, there too. But do you use AI for your Shopify stores? And if so, how? Yeah, so we use AI for our drop shipping stores. Not crazy amounts though, because I feel like AI is not quite where it needs to be yet. But we use it, for example, like creating product descriptions, maybe creating some FAQs. Um, enhancing our images. So if our images are poor quality, we put them through renders where it makes it really good quality. Even video renders you can do now. Um, we also do it for ad descriptions. So like Facebook ad copies, Google ad copies. So more the copyright inside of things and the visual things we use it for. You can use it for, for product research as well by using ChatGBT to go out there and do, um, you know, with ChatGBT4 now, it does actual analysis based on data. So you can ask, you know, ChatGBT, what's the best selling product for, uh, Christmas last year will tie the information and give you some really good information. Um, and we've also integrated, especially with the product research side of things and like the copyright side of things, we've integrated a lot of AI into Peekster so you can now get your product descriptions made, your FAQs made, et cetera, to basically speed up the process. Okay, nice. So another thing that Peekster can offer us here during our product research, if we want to shortcut and get more uh, product ideas in, in less time using Peekster, we can also, uh, it also has integration with, uh, with AI to create better product titles, better product descriptions, which is great. Um, and yeah, personally, I'm doing the same on my uh, stores. You can't run your whole, you can't run everything on AI, at least not yet. Uh, we still have to be, we still have to review its work and see what it's doing. But, and if you want to, you know, do it for the short things, like the, for the small things, like rewriting product descriptions, rewriting product titles, it does so much, much better than, than you, what you're going to get from your suppliers. So uh, it's definitely highly recommend also doing that. Glad you hear that you're, uh, that you're on it too. So let's go over some uh, some some better so, so, some tips for beginners. Let's talk about Shopify apps. So are there any Shopify apps that you really recommend uh, for drop shipping? And if so, of course, which ones and why? I'm men I'm talking about the Shopify apps that you can of course download and install from the App Store. Some are free, uh, some are paid. Let me know what are some of your favorites and why. Yeah, of course. The first one's got to be AutoDS, you know, of course. It uh, makes life very easy. Um, there's a lot of things that AutoDS, AutoDS does to make your life very easy. Uh, then the ones on top of that is always have things like Bundle Bear, you know, bundle your products up to try and get your AOV up. The, the, the ones that are just unnecessary, you cannot even question is Clavio Email Marketing, um, SMS Bump, which is text message marketing. The amount of people that I speak to that are saying, Ecom King, I've run ads, spent $300. I've got loads of ads to carts. Why are they not converted? And then I say to them, do you have email marketing set up to recover the carts? Do you have SMS up? No, we don't have it set up. So you've just spent, the thing you got to understand is if you're spending money on ads or any form of marketing and you haven't got any um, re cart recovery system set up, you're literally flushing money down the toilet because you've got to understand that you have to recover them. And that's something that you're investing in the data, which is their emails. You then need to have something set up to then recapture them. Then the next one is Tidio live chat. I love that, you know, that the live chat system is, is unmatched in my opinion. Uh, they offer some really good features in there to help with customer support, giving them offers, keeping them up to date with AI in terms of where is that order. They can literally put in the chat, where is my order? If you set it up correctly, it will then tell them. Then you've got other apps like your tracking apps, which is 17 tracking, I believe, uh, that we use. 
Um, and then you've got other ones, like I said, the bundle ones. You've got um, LA Reviews, Lie Reviews, I think it's called. That That's just a review app. It's for free. You don't have to pay for it. You can import reviews into your store from AliExpress. Um, you've got loads of other ones. You've got your currency converters that are good. You've got your uh, language, you know, language changes that are good. But the, but the email marketing ones, in my opinion, are the ones that you really need to have and you'll reco- uh, right, recover. Those, are, those are the ones that at the end of the day are, are, are going to bring you another conversion. Right, because they're they're gonna go and get them, and so correct me if I'm wrong, but all of the apps that you mentioned, the SMS bump, the uh, the, the TDO live chat, and the emails, uh, Clavio, they all have free plans, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, so if you're a beginner, if you're a beginner, which most people are, you have free plans for all of them, and not to like promote my own stuff or anything, but if because I've got an exclusive deal with SMS bump where if you use my link. You get a thousand texts for free, which normally costs around about ten dollars. So you're well, five dollars. So you're getting it completely free. So there's no there's no reason why you're not doing it. Okay, um, cool. Let's then, drop the link below this video. So if anyone's watching this video on uh, on our uh, social media channels on YouTube, you'll find the link below. If you're hearing this uh, podcast episode on uh, Apple app, uh, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you're gonna have to go to our YouTube channel and check out the link. But uh, but all right, cool. One thousand free emails was it? That's pretty good. Okay, um, so those are that's a little bit about Shopify apps. Uh, there, there are some really good apps that you mentioned there. Um, I know of all of them, and there's really no reason not to have each and every one of them. Whether it's a live chat to keep up with your customer service and to see, but make sure that customers will really like love buying from you because you actually were able to answer their questions after they purchase from you instead of just you know kind of ignoring them and whatever they'll never come back and they'll never recommend anyone to buy from you again. And all the other apps, I'm not gonna uh, dive deeper, but uh, really good apps that you recommended there. Uh, okay, so that's a little bit about uh, Shopify apps. How about some tips on best practices for optimizing the sh- your Shopify store performance and increasing conversions? Let me just kind of reword that for, for the beginners here. So let's get some tips on things that we should do to make our store look better, perform better, so that at the end of the day, we'll get more conversions, which means more sales. Yeah, so there's a few things that you want to do. You want to simplify your store. Don't go crazy with anything. So if we work from the home page, now remember you're gonna be driving most of your traffic to your product pages or your collection pages. So make the home page simple and clean. Don't bloat where your 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 store out with loads of apps that you don't need because then you add in code to it, which will slow it down. Then on the product page, this is where things need to be done properly. So with your product page, you wanna keep it simple and short. So you want at least five to 10 images in the image section of the product page. And then in terms of the description, this is what I personally do, you don't have to do it. I write a one paragraph description. And then if they want to read the rest, it's in a drop down menu because most people don't like reading anymore. And then where I make up for the actual written format that they might not see, I have a video on my product page explaining the product. So it's an unboxing video, it's an explaining video and a showcase video. So you can either add them separately or add them in one video. And then I also have customer reviews, not just imported from AliExpress, but I, if, if I really want to take things to the next level, I will pay somebody to pretend that they're making a review of the product and then have like a UGC video of it on the, on, on the product page. And then I'll also have like the features, like going side to side with image or text. What is this feature? What does it do? But the most important thing is imagery is very key. Now, if you have just a simple image of your product, it's boring. But if you have an image where you've got like arrows pointing to certain points of the product and then explaining what they do in really nice graphics, that's going to do really well. So instead of people reading a product description, they like to look at an image with graphs and text and then it helps them. That's what I like to do. And then have a one checkout system. Don't over overcomplicate the checkout. Make it super simple for them. Have all the different options like Amazon Pay, Apple Pay, Google Pay set up and you're good to go. Okay, so the main takeaway here is keep it simple, guys. Keep it simple. Don't try to overcomplicate things. Not too many pop-ups, not too much upsells and cross-sells. You can have some, but don't put it all on one page. The customers will run away pretty quickly. And, uh, of course, showcase what the product is solving, what problem the product is helping them solve. Make sure that they see it right away, that they can even see it from the first image or from the first video as soon as they uh, load up your product page make sure that it's clear, keep it simple, the product page and the the checkout process, of course. I've seen some sellers using that sticky uh, add to cart on the bottom. I don't know if you're also uh, um, implementing that, but I think that's the, um, it, it's also a nice way to like keep the, uh, keep the shopper, uh, you know, 
engage with your with your product page and and not forget to check out i mean if he were if he'd want to check out he'd probably you know do so anyway but it's just another thing that you can probably throw on there that i've seen a lot of sellers do i've also noticed that you've been helping people review their drop shipping stores on 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 your youtube channel which i think is uh uh is a nice thing they just throw their uh, website in the on the chat and then you just open up their website and also give them like a little uh, review there so you know those who are not making enough sales or making some sales but are still but are trying to scale it up i think it's really nice that you're also doing that because you're giving out uh, some really good tips there too so if you guys want of course you can check out his youtube channel and see everything that ecom king is uh doing there or you can find the link of course right below this video let's continue so we talked about um how to optimize uh, our product pages uh some really good tips there what marketing strategies have worked uh, for you when you're promoting your stores? And this is a pain point for many people who are thinking about starting to dropship on Shopify. And that's simply because they understand that at the end, it requires a budget. And many, many people who want to start, want to start with no money. They want to start with $0 or $5 or $10. And they want to make, you know, they want to make it with that. And this is a pain point. So let's talk a little bit about that. What marketing strategies have worked well for you when you're promoting your stores or your products inside your stores? Yeah, so you have to understand how traffic works. You've got cold traffic and warm traffic and different platforms work for different ones. The way we do it, if we were to launch a new, new dropshipping product, this is how we do things. We, look, we run Facebook ads, that's cold traffic, that generates us cold traffic. We also run uh, TikTok ads. We find TikTok ads is cheaper to get people to your website. Not always the best, but I'd advise if you have an advertising budget, chop it in half, put it between the two and see how it goes. Now, if I've seen success with the product with those two platforms, then I'll then try Google. Google's a really good platform to get really high quality cold traffic. The only downside to Google is the, the, the retargeting side of things is terrible. So then put the retargeting back into Facebook. Um, retargeting on TikTok isn't great in my opinion. For cold traffic, it's amazing. But retargeting, if you want lots of money, you need to put the retargeting into Facebook. Okay, retarget for those of you who are uh, for those of you who are new, of course, means how do I target the customers again with the ads? Those who either engage with my ad, engage with my product, add it to cart, or did some kind of an uh, an event, which is which is one of those things. Like even viewing your product page or clicking on the link or whatever. You want to retarget them and try to grab them again, try to offer them some kind of a deal and get them back to your store to to purchase uh, and check out with the product. And so you're saying that with Google, it's a little bit more difficult, a little bit easier with Facebook and TikTok, which is why it's better to start marketing on with uh, Facebook ads, TikTok ads, maybe split your budget budget between them because they are both good sources of traffic bringers to your stores. And from there, you can even expand it to uh, Google, as you as you mentioned. And do you have any tips on on what they can do like um, about marketing the product itself. So let's say, okay, I'm going to run uh, my ad on TikTok. I'm going to run my ad on Facebook. Any tips on what we should do there to make sure that our ads actually run well and, and convert? Now, I know marketing and running ads, it's, it's, it's a whole A to Z full tutorial, but if we could just like summarize some main points on how to do it the right way. Yeah, so I'll give you my overall opinion because, like you said, it can be a whole tutorial. So, one, right. keep the audience broad. So, when you set up your targeting, always start broad. Never start niched. Always start as broad as you can. Focus on a group of countries. So, if you want to do, like, the top tier ones, you do US, UK, you know, in the, in the same ones. You don't – you can try them on their own, but grouping is always great, great to see which ones do better than fill them down later. So basically what I'm trying to say is start with the best and then filter down later on once you get the information based on what's working well. Creative sort of things, if it's fashion related or jewelry related, then I find image ads work amazing. Carousel ads work really, really well. Uh, in terms of videos, you know, for Facebook, it's more of those professional lighthearted videos that do really well in the aspect ratio being one to one with TikTok. It's obviously nine to 16. With TikTok, try different formats, unboxing videos, how-to videos, trial videos. With TikTok, there's different types of um, angles that, that work instead of on Facebook because Facebook videos are very different to TikTok videos. So you have to use your offer. You basically have to put your offer into a format on what works better on natural content for those platforms. So really think about don't repurpose TikTok for Facebook. It can work, but I don't recommend it. And vice versa with the other way around as well. Okay, some really, really good golden nuggets here. I'm sure that you guys are listening. I'm sure that you're appreciating it. Uh, pre appreciating it. So, uh, 
So thank you, of course, for that. Let's talk a little bit about uh, once we have, I mean, we talked a little bit about suppliers and, and finding the products and why we're going with Shopify and strategies uh, for product research and, and, and methods for, uh, for marketing and other tips that we went through. So now that we kind of have a clear picture of what we can do and what are what opportunities lay ahead of us, once we actually create our stores, we start adding products that at some point, right, inev in inev inevitably, we're going to start making sales. And once that happens, we're going to want to scale so that we can make more, se more sales and more profits. And as we scale, we encounter all kinds of difficulties, just like any other business. And what we and, and one of the solutions here is when you want to scale correctly is automation. Automation is not nothing. It's nothing that's new in this world. It's nothing that's new in this industry. But without it, let's 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 go ahead and ask you: What methods do you use to grow your business once your store is up and running? You want to add more products. You want to make more sales. You want to start automating it. What do we have? Yeah. So the, the things that I work on is all, what what automations can I do through software, which then gets rid of the problem of me hiring VAs to do the work. So for example, AutoDS gives you auto fulfillment, so they will fulfill the orders for you. That's a great way to save time. And then how can I, you know, automate, you know, tracking numbers so my customers receive tracking numbers and then they get updated and then they're not reaching out to me. How can I create emails that automate so if somebody sends me a keyword that contains where is my order it automates and responds back with the relevant information and then in terms of product research you can if you really want to use paid tools like peaks to, to then find them quicker or you can hire vas to go out there and find them quicker um, and then when it comes to content creation you can hire you know companies to go out there and create the videos for you hire freelancers to go out there and make your ugc videos for you to test with um, these are things that I really like to do to, to save time. But there's, there's one thing that I never automate, and that is my marketing, because I feel like there's not many people out there that can do it as well as me. I find that's the hardest part of automating any business is firing good, fi finding good media buyers to run the ads for you. In terms of content creation, website design, um, those ones can be outsourced fairly easily. Yeah, so I want to touch, I want to circle back to a couple of things that you uh, that you mentioned there. So in terms of marketing, I completely agree. I uh, I don't know how possible it is to automate marketing today. And I doubt that the results are going to be anywhere near as good as what we could do manually. This is really a spot where we have to continue working as humans. Because when we see an ad, I think it's pretty obvious to know if, uh, if a human made it or if just some bot made it. And we want to be able to connect. We want to be able to resonate. And with that, we're going to have to have human created uh, uh, marketing uh, ads and strategies. Uh, so I completely agree with you there. Uh, AutoDS, so thank you for that. You can use that for automating your products, uh, for uh, importing your products automatically, managing your prices in stock automatically. So as you mentioned, instead of getting a virtual assistant to do all of this for you, which is what we used to do when we used to do everything manually, we would even have to have uh, back like uh, about seven, eight years ago when we were scaling, it was all about having a team of virtual assistants. One is uploading products all day. One is uh, issuing out my orders. One is talking to, uh, customer to customers, doing the customer service. One is going through my inventory, uh, the drop shipping inventory, right? And like uh, uh, deleting products that are not performing well and, and, um, uh, and helping with product research to add new products. So we'd have to have one for everything. And today we can just have a system do it all for us automatically. So if the prices change, if the stock changes on our suppliers' websites, the changes will get uh, updated automatically on our stores. We can import products, single products, multiple products in a click and automating our orders, which is a huge, huge, huge time saver, especially once you're gonna get 15, 20, 30 plus orders per day. You're gonna spend all day just it, just processing out your orders, making sure that you're not, I just made a mistake last week. So um, uh, half of my orders are being processed automatically and half are done manually. And of course it's a, it's a, a true story. And I sent out the wrong product to, to the customer. And it's an international order, so it's much harder now to get him to return it to the, to the warehouse and send out another one. And the product cost me over $100. So I'm usually around the medium to high ticket products. And I let the customer know. I sent a message. I'm like, hey, listen, you're going to get the wrong product. Um, please return it. And he's like, yeah, OK, but what about the, the real product? Like, did you send it out? 
And I wanted to wait for him to return it before I have to send out the new product again. But since he asked and I, I don't want him to, you know, get mad or anything, I sent out the, 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 the real product too. And I'm just kind of sitting back and hoping that he's going to send that one back. So what I'm trying to say here is we're still human and we still make human mistakes. And if we don't have automation, we're probably going to continue making uh, human mistakes. And that's not the only disadvantage that we have from processing everything manually. You don't want to sit down all day and process everything and, and just do one thing, which is today I'm only going to process out my orders. Why not continue growing your business? Why not open up another store? So why not put everything on automation and continue in, uh, enhancing and growing your business? So that's a little bit about uh, um, automation. And for product research, as you mentioned, there are ways to do it manually. So it's the same thing, guys. Do you want to do things manually? It's fine. That's also a way to do it. It's just going to take you more time and the results will come in slower, but it'll still happen. Or you can just throw in some automation for product research using Pixa to really be able to narrow down the hot selling niches and not stay on a broad level of product research and just testing out hundreds or even thousands of products until you finally start to find some uh, some winners. So that's also for product research. And of course, the rest, as you mentioned. Okay, let's move on to the next one. But guys, do not take this one lightly. If you want to scale, you want to succeed, you will not be able to do so without automation. Which automation tools you're going to choose? You can go with the ones that we recommended, but make sure that you have automation if you really want to be able to grow and scale. Customer service. Not everybody wants to talk about this. Not everybody wants to handle customer service. No, not everybody wants to open up their, start their day to see uh, mad customers wondering where their packages are or why, they, or, or why the item arrived uh, broken. Let's talk a little bit about that because it's still a part of our business. Even if it's just one to 2% of your business, it's a part of it and we have to learn to put up with it and do it the right way. So what strategies do you have for us to ensure a positive customer experience and maintain customer satisfaction in our stores? Yeah, so it all starts from out of the door. So the customer experience starts on your website. So as long as you can give them valid, accurate information from the start, because if you go, I've seen people do it and it's just the wrong way to do it. They put on their website that they're going to receive the order in three days. They're obviously not going to do it. You've already started it really bad. So just be honest and transparent from the start before they even buy the product on what the expectations are, because if their expectations are up here, but your service delivery is down here, there's going to be a big problem straight away. Right. Then we move on to when they buy the, or sorry, when they buy the product. So, Make sure you've got a custom email sent out and you can go into, pardon me, Shopify's email editor and customize the checkout uh, order received um, email. So when they receive an order, sorry, when they place an order, they get an email straight away saying, thank you, your order confirmation. Customize it and have on there everything in terms of expectations, average delivery time, email to get to, phone number if you've got one. And in that way, you're going to help somebody feel a little bit more comfortable with what they've bought. And then you want to follow them up as much as you can, telling them, look, guys, your order's being shipped on this day, expect it on this day. Um, and then just say to them, if there's any issues when you receive your order, just take a photo, send us an email. We can we can look after you, no problems. You know, Because most people, when they buy something, they panic because they're like, oh, who is the person that's going to help me in this journey? So as long as you show them straight away that you're there, then they're going to feel more relaxed. I really like that. So guys, you can do what every other dropshipper is doing, which is anyway, I mean, Shopify is set to send an automatic message once your customer places an order or once the order has been uh, uh, shipped or maybe even once the order has been uh, uh, received, you can even set something for that. But what you're going to do is you're going to have the same message that the customer is going to get if they buy from your competitor. So what's so special about that? And what you can do here, and this is what this is why I also like uh, uh, the way that you are uh, tutoring is because there is teaching what every other dropshipper does. It, it'll still work, but it's what everybody else does. And here's how you can do it differently and make it even better. So it's setting customer expectations in that email and letting the customer know what's going on with their package, what to expect from it. Uh, what to, uh, of course, what to expect, when to expect it, uh, leaving a, a link to an email to, to, or, or a phone number to get back to you. And every time your customers reach out to you, you can also learn from that. So see what they're reaching out to you for, why they're reaching out to you, what the reasons are. And if you could save it, if you could do something so that next time they could get the answer before they even have to reach out to you. That way you can really minimize it. And again, I really like the tips that you're giving here. Have you ever encountered something like really specific for one of your customers like, I don't know, some really weird experience that you had to uh, overcome? 
Yeah, so with our fashion company, we get a lot of them. Uh, I don't know if many people know about fashion, but it can be a headache. We've had it where, you know, the, the biggest one we get, honestly, right now is the one where people are saying that they're not receiving the order, but they clearly are receiving the order, but they're trying to get, you know, charge back. They're trying to get the basically the product for free. Right. But obviously, they're just doing credit card scams and stuff like that, which is really annoying. It's very hard to outcome because the payment gateways, the banks favor with the customer, not the actual business. So it's very hard to deal with. It's a lot of stress for the business. And, and I know people go through these and that's why I want to move on to do, do check your customer's, you know, payment, see the risk level. If it's low risk, then, you know, you should be fine. But if it's medium, I know people that see medium, they don't panic. They just send it out. That's a bad thing to do. Although it's classed as medium, you still need to check what are the problems. If their card doesn't match their address, that is my red flag. That is when I'm not sending the product out unless they update it because they're going to charge back and get all their money back. Mm -hmm. So you need to really take these seriously. Again, great tips. So check out the customer's payment details. You'll get them on Shopify and they'll either be green, uh, what is it, orange or red. And mm -hmm. uh, that way you'll also get the reason why that is and if, uh, as you mentioned, if the address is different, they're probably going to uh, uh, get a chargeback on that and the payment institutions are going to favor the buyers and this is going to be uh, a problem. So make sure that you're checking out your customers before you ship out the products to them. Okay, so that's actually that actually answers my next question and we're about to wrap up, but we still have some uh, golden nuggets. By the way, I did ask some surprise questions in here that uh, Ecom King was not ready for, so I'm glad that you were also able to uh, uh, answer them to uh, the best of your ability. Um, I really love your tips. I love your answers. We still have some really good ones to uh, go over. So we talked a little bit about some trouble, tr some troubles and overcoming uh, challenges. Um, are there any specific hurdles or difficulties that new dropshippers should be aware of? Because, you know, new dropshippers are probably not going to have hundreds or thousands of orders with, uh, I don't know, 10% or 5% chargebacks. So, like, anything for beginners that difficulties that they're going to encounter and how they should uh, be addressed? I think the one that is the obvious one for me when I see people is time management. They work a nine to five, which is great. Always have your nine to five because that's your security. That's what you're going to be using to invest into your business. But people struggle to find time. So you're either going to have to make time before or you're going to have to make time after your job. And you have to come to an agreement that you have to be strict with your time management. Then there's the other side, which is skill barrier. Now, drop shipping is nowhere near as simple as it was back in the olden days. Things are a little bit more enhanced. And that isn't just drop shipping, that's every other business. You know, you've got these big giants that have had to adapt now to how things are, and so do you. So right. there is a skill barrier that you need to adjust to. So you're not gonna be great at everything. I was terrible to start with at creating video content, um, editing the footage, making the footage. I was terrible at it. It took me time. Website design was the easy part for me. I enjoyed it, I liked doing it. So you have to understand that there's going to be a skill barrier. You're not going to be great to everything. You are going to lose money. And if somebody tells you you're not, then that's wrong. Always come into this with the uh, mindset of you're going to lose money because you naturally are going to lose money. Um, and as long as you've got those things, and then it's the emotional, control your emotions when you get into this and don't get angry. Um, and you have to just understand that the biggest one that I see is people also get attached to their product. If my, my verdict is if I've spent 250 to $300 between Facebook and TikTok, and I'm not seeing the data that I need to see, I'm cutting it, I'm moving on. You know, it's like you go on a date with a woman. If, if you're seeing red flags throughout the dates, you need to cut out, you know, it's a, I don't know if it's a crazy analogy, but it's a good analogy. These are things you have to, you have to do. Okay, there's some really good ones there. I'm just going to touch on time management, but uh, everything you said, also the skills. Just talk, talk a little bit about time management because this is going to be one of your biggest issues when you when you guys are starting off. And I had the same thing. And, you know, the things that you talked about, I kind of thought back into my first days and it was like, wow, he's like spot on. Time management is one of those things. So uh, it, it's not even a nine to five where I'm from. It's actually nine to six. And then you come home. And then if you've got a wife and kids, you got to also take care of that. And then you got to find that little small whatever time you have left, you have to make up that, you have to make that time. You don't need to watch Netflix from nine to 10. You don't have to do those things. You, you'll, you, I'm sure that you feel less productive at this point and that's why you're also taking an interest into more things. This is the perfect time to sit down with a laptop on your lap or whatever in, in your desk, in your home office and start something new. Not only are you gonna learn something, but you're actually gonna start taking action. And at some point you're actually even gonna start seeing results. Don't worry about burning the first $100, the first $200 until you start seeing uh, uh, stats coming in from your ads. 
knowing exactly when to turn them when to turn them off. So as you mentioned, if you see that it's not performing after three four hundred dollars ad spend, don't try your luck and try to and and put it now on a thousand or two thousand limit. Kill it right there. Something there is not working right. I don't know what it is because I haven't seen your ad yet. But you have to do the analytics yourself, but also know when to stop that budget and to move on to the next thing. And even as you mentioned, when one product does sell well for you, and pretty sure everybody remembers their first product, their first sell, don't get attached to your products. This this is a this is something this is something that happens actually quite easily to drop shippers. Don't get attached. You're going to move on to the ne next product sooner or later. So you might as well get attached. You might as well get used to the feelings and emotions that you have and control them, especially once you really start to scale and see numbers coming in, you, you're going to want that to continue and you're going to want to keep scaling that. Talk a little bit about, about your future plans. What are your uh, future plans or goals in the field of dropshipping on Shopify? Yeah, so um, to be honest with you guys, I still run loads of dropshipping stores now because they're a great way in e-commerce, believe it or not, as a beginner, you might not understand this, but Dropshipping is a great way to create lots of cash flow as an as a very easy way in the e-commerce world. I'm on about e-commerce because remember, dropshipping is a part of e-commerce. Right. Now, I have a lot of brands, clothing brands, you know, are my biggest catalog of brands that are not dropshipping. They're still e-commerce, but they require a lot of money to, to keep going. So I use my dropshipping stores to create cash to then pump into these brands or convert them into brands because – where you make the biggest money in this is when you sell your brands. You know, some of the biggest names in YouTube, you know, I'm not going to name them, but there's, there's quite some big content creators out there in the space that you might know of that have sold their dropshipping stores and made six figures, seven figures. So you make really the most money when you sell your brands. So that's the point that you should all be worth. So even when you start a dropshipping store, you should start it in, in, in the mindset of, what will my exit be out of this? You want to build your dropshipping store in a way that you can exit it when you sell it. And that's really, really important because that's where you make the life changing money. That is the honest truth that not many people are going to tell you. So at, at the moment for me, I'm just building as many drop shipping stores that I can manage with my team to invest the money into my brands because my brands are the ones that are going to eventually sell for $20 million, $30 million, $40 million. So that's my plan. That's amazing. That's amazing. I'm not sure if, uh, if many of the listeners here, I've even thought about that direction. It's just pretty much just starting a store and starting to make an extra income every month. But once you are able to actually make an exit from your, from your e-commerce store, dropshipping store, that's when you'll really start to see the big numbers. That's when you can reinvest these numbers into opening more and continuing to sell them, continuing to make a profit. And yeah, I think that's a great, great, great strategy and a nice future plan and goal to have in mind. Okay, so closing off, is there any other advice or key takeaway that you would like to share with aspiring dropshipping entrepreneurs who are listening to us now? Yeah, I think the most important one for me, because I've been in the game for so long now, guys, what, I started in 2017, so how long is that? Three, six, it's coming up to seven years now. Yes, but again, you got to remember, I've been into you know my online business since 2015, although it wasn't dropshipping. I was selling things on Instagram, which is a form of e-commerce. So I started in 2015. So I've, I've started doing this since I was a 15-year-old kid. I'm now a 23-year-old, so I've been in the game for a very long time. I've seen a lot of things change. And my honest truth is, keep your mindset strong because you're going to hear people tell you. When I started dropshipping in 2017, um, sorry, people were telling me that dropshipping was dead. And I was going on Reddit, I was going on Quora, and I kept Even seeing back people. Back then, people were saying it. Golden and days. since... And since then, I've done eight figures in revenue combined with all of my stores. So if I listened to those people, I would have probably still been at my nine to five. I would have still been desperate for making money. So what I'm trying to tell you guys is you're going to still hear these people every single day saying this. And the reason why they're saying it is because they've tried it, they quit. And the, the truth is now they hate. Now they just want to bring other people down because they feel miserable. So you have to learn to not listen to these people because they're toxic and they will ruin it for you. So just stay strong, ignore these people. If you've got family members that are a little bit like not supportive, like mine weren't amazing at the start, then you have to understand that they're not going to understand until they see you succeed. And the truth is the winners, what makes a winner from a loser is the one that's willing to carry on and not quit. The only difference between me and the people that don't see success is I didn't quit. I carried on. That is just it. Guys, this is not a fairy tale. This is all from actual personal and professional experience. And I'm really, really glad to to not only hear it, but being able to actually conversate with someone who has real experience in the field that's been doing it for uh, with uh, for uh, seven years now, who came with nothing, people trying to bring you down, people trying to tell you that it's not going to work. And 
this is what came out of it, right? You could have listened, and I'm glad that you didn't. I'm sure that you're glad also. So you, for me, are a walking, talking, breathing role model for everything that has to do with uh, e-commerce, dropshipping, and creating your own, you know, being an entrepreneur, taking on the world, you know, on your shoulders, not being afraid, not being apologetic, and just taking action, which I think is one of the most important things here that many people procrastinate, procrastinate on, which is the part where you actually have to take action. Okay, I can learn. I can learn for one year. I can learn for uh, three years. I can learn for four years, whether here in college, but at some point you're going to have to start taking action. Once that happens, that's when you're going to actually start seeing the results, especially if you don't give up after your first one, five or 10 failures, because that's actually when you're actually going to, that's when you're going to start seeing success. Ecom King, thank you very much. So many golden nuggets in this podcast episode. I hope that all of you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. And yeah, before we last thing, where else can people find more information about you and your work? So I want to start off by saying a massive thank you for your kind words as well and for having me on the platform and sharing my wisdom. And if people want to stay up to date with me, I don't force people. You can just simply go onto YouTube and type in the Ecom King. You can follow me on Instagram. I'm not too active on Instagram, but I'm there. YouTube's where I give out everything. Like I literally pour my heart into YouTube. I don't I don't hold back, although I have people tell you know, I've got oh, I, this 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 is for another thing, but you know, I've got a lot I've had a lot of stick and basically bad I had a lot of negativity from other creators in the space because of how much I give away for free and how right. it damages their business right. because they make money off it. So mm -hmm. I've gone through a lot of bad stuff in my uh, YouTube career since 2018, 19, when I started it, uh, just to give the people all the information for free and not hold back. And uh, you guys can just, you know, although you, you although it's for free, you might not value it the same as something that's paid, but true, the God's honest truth is everything there can change your your business life if you take it serious. And even when they came up to you and they said, hey, listen, you're you're kind of killing us here. You're kind of like <laughs> taking our audiences and whatever we're charging for money, you're giving it to them for free. You continued, of course, with your own, with your, yeah, with your teaching for free and you continued with the content. You didn't like let that slow you down or stop you. I'm really glad. I'm really glad about that, too. So, right. So a lot of lots of information there on his YouTube channel. Of course, I'm going to leave a link to Ecom King's YouTube channel right below this video in the description. So if you're listening and you're not watching, go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash AutoDS. Be sure to subscribe, of course, if you love content like this and check out his YouTube channel. Uh, what tool did we say that we're leaving a link to for 1,000? Uh, was it emails or was it SMS? SMS bump. SMS, SMS bump. bump. So not emails, right. So, for one, uh, so I'm going to also leave a link for that SMS bump app. You guys will be able to send 1,000 free SMSs to your customers instead of, of course, paying for it. So the link for that will be below. And um, yeah, anything else? What about uh, the product research tool, Pixa? I will also leave that below this video so that you guys will simply have a shortcut to everything that you need, all of the valuable resources that we talked about in this episode. But of course, there's more things that we talked about that you will simply have to go to Google and find it yourself. Thank you once again, Ecom King, for being here today. I was really glad to do it. And guys, let me know in the comments what you thought below. Should we have an episode two? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And thank you, Ecom King.